When my mom was first diagnosed, I was eight years old. I remember we sat down on the couch and she told me that she had cancer. I think I was more scared than anything and I, I, I didn't really know how to react. I went to my general doctor and said, I'm having a hard time breathing. He says, let's do a chest x-ray. And what they found was that I had 27 ounces of fluid around my heart. Immediately they had me operated on to drain that fluid. That's when they had told me that they found cancer cells. He sat down and said that I had stage four non-smoker lung cancer because I don't, I don't smoke. I told him, don't tell me how long I have to live. I want to make that clear. I just wanted to know what was the next steps I need to do. I got diagnosed in December of 2010, and I literally started chemo treatment in January. I had chemo for nine months, and then they were able to control the spread of the cancer that first year. The remission was two years, and I thought that it was starting to feel good because I was going down that path of being cancer-free. One day I had severe headaches. A family member took me into the Stanford ER and doing a brain MRI, they said that I have seven tumors in my brain. I remember the day as if it were yesterday that I met her. I walk into this room with this young woman who appeared to be about my age. You could just feel the love in the room. I remember Dr. Gibbs so clearly from that first appointment. And I remember she came up to me and comforted me and told me, you know, I'm gonna do everything in my power to help your mom conquer this. It was like a whole community of people trying to fight just for this one person. I looked at the imaging and the reflexive action would have been to treat the entire brain with the radiation. But I sat there and I thought, gosh, you know, I know the potential devastating effects that that might have. And it just didn't sit right, but I know that that one was sort of the standard of care. This one was that next frontier of saying, do we have to keep doing things exactly in the same way? It's almost like steering a large ship and really changing directions. And in our field, we're now taking really different approaches than we did maybe a decade ago. We tried an approach of delaying the radiation because she was relatively stable after the initial surgery. I felt that more than likely we would need the radiation and we did eventually, but now I could actually apply it to much lower volumes of the brain tissue and felt more comfortable with this targeted stereotactic radiotherapy to the areas within the brain. I often say to my trainees and residents, Sometimes the best decision for us as radiation oncologists is actually knowing when not to treat. She's had different courses of radiation to other areas of the body, but it's with this tailored approach of addressing the issue at hand and continuing the other therapies as needed. And so in total, it's been since her initial diagnosis more than a decade. And that one I think is just phenomenal to witness in a disease that may have had a much shorter life expectancy. My journey's been so long that, you know, still fighting through, through all this. It's just, I want to keep moving forward. I think my mom's been through the most I've ever seen anyone ever go through. You know, life isn't perfect, but it's definitely manageable. And manageable meaning that you can live life and still be happy. This is a phenomenal woman. This is someone who just takes the challenges that are before her and keeps it moving. And I'll have to tell you that I've just been just so amazed by her, inspired um, by that kind of resilience. I like to think of myself as somewhat resilient, but I think she's taken it to the next level. And so I'm so proud of her. How I've been able to be resilient and positive through this, well, I would say, gotta be around for Sierra, you know? got to stick around for family too. You got to just keep going and I just have to take it one day at a time.